and welcome to ComSpark. I'm Lauren Worley and today we're in Dayton, Ohio. Today I've got Chris Cool with Dayton Children's Hospital here with me. Welcome Chris. Thank you. So Chris, um, with automation and AI, how do you see those improving cybersecurity for Dayton? So um, at Dayton Children's, we actually use both um, automation and AI as a, like a force multiplier. Um, we use automation mainly because we have such a small team to focus on doing the repetitive administrative tasks that we don't have time to do, uh, again, because we're so focused on, on other things that are a little more taxing. Um, AI, we use that to uh, alert us whenever it, our systems detect something unusual or an anomaly in our network traffic uh, in near real time so that we can make a decision quickly and quarantine the device or uh, allow it to continue to function. And that kind of leads into my next question about how you're proactively, um, you know, addressing security threats when it comes to, I, uh, you know, IoT and um, operational IT since it's kind of in everything now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it certainly is. So uh, that is a very, very important topic. Um, we're using a combination of asset management or inventorying tools, uh, vulnerability management tools, um, as well as uh, threat intelligence from different organizations uh, around the world for those specific IoT type devices because security on those devices is so far behind, so lacking. So um, is that where you're seeing some of the biggest vulnerabilities today or maybe some other areas too? Yeah, um, again, healthcare is, is behind the power curve when it comes to all the different industries as far as security goes and technology. So um, some of the biggest vulnerabilities that we're actually seeing are uh, because of the FDA approvals that are required. Um, an, an application can only be certified to run on Windows XP still or Windows 2000. So we have to figure out how can we protect those unsupported applications um, you know, before the FDA will update what they approve it, that application to run on to something more current. Um, the other big vulnerability that we're seeing, um, I, I know that's kind of a, a future question coming up, um, since healthcare has been so far behind on the security, on the cybersecurity front end uh, compared to all the other industries, um, they haven't had to focus or worry about cybersecurity. So coming into Dayton Children's, um, there is no uh, cyber aware culture. So we're changing the culture uh, with leadership support. But uh, yeah, those two things are, are the biggest vulnerabilities. Sure, and, and what, are you, what are you most excited about, you know, and, and what's to come? And uh, how, are, how are those technologies gonna, you know, help you and, and help the, the hospital? So um, the two that I'm really focused on, I, I actually wrote it down because I was reading about it last week and I wanted to make sure that I got it. Uh, right. So um, the two that I'm actually really interested in is, um, like in your first question, AI. As new vendors are uh, creating uh, the firewalls of tomorrow, right, next-gen firewalls, how are they going to develop machine learning or put AI into those, um, as well as other tools um, that are necessary for cybersecurity in healthcare or any other industry? Um, so it's going to be really interesting how AI develops and gets integrated. Um, the second thing actually is known as zero knowledge proofs, um, but it builds on blockchain, uh, which is something that we're actually uh, looking at um, a little more seriously now that, we, now that we're kind of off the ground and running with our cyber program. And what is so cool about that technology, it's already being adopted by, in the financial sector. Um, but it allows two different organizations or two different people or parties to be able to um, verify who the other side is without exchanging any confidential data. So that's going to be really cool when it comes to electronic medical records or uh, PCI credit card information. 
So um, more to come, I guess. It's really exciting. Sure. And when you're, you said that, you know, the hospitals can be a little bit late adopters, especially because of the hoops you have to jump through with approvals. Yes. What are some of the industries that you maybe see you're getting there first or maybe that you're kind of modeling yourself after? So, um, yeah, we're actually I'm modeling our program after a few different things. Um, I did spend time working in the financial uh, sector. Um, they are typically the front runners for new, embracing new technology. Um, and then I also spent some time um, with the DOD and uh, they're actually front runners with technology. So we're modeling our program after those two primary. I would primarily. imagine those are great people to emulate. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Um, again, yeah, that's uh, Chris Cool with um, Dayton Children's Hospital. For more information, visit comspark.tech.